Hey guys, this is Gunther from LRTimelapse.com and this is a basic tutorial for LR Timelapse 5. In this tutorial I'm going to show you the very basics of working with LR Timelapse. You will learn how to set keyframes, how to um, edit those keyframes in Lightroom, then make a transition, deflicker the whole sequence and then export it uh, until you get a rendered video. I'm going to use a very simple sequence that I already have copied to my hard drive. If you want to learn how to use the LR Timelapse importer, there is a separate tutorial explaining the importer. Check that out too, because the LR Timelapse importer is very useful to copy your uh, stuff from the memory card of your camera to your hard drive. In this case, we already have a folder with the time-lapse sequence on the hard drive. I'm navigating to this folder here and um, in LR time-lapse 5 you will get some indicators here where you can see the position in the workflow where uh, if you already have edited your sequences. In this case we don't have any edits yet so we're just going to open up the sequence and LR time-lapse will load the camera previews from the sequence. It's nothing edited yet into LR time-lapse and as this is happening you can already play back your sequence. So you see this is a very easy and very short time-lapse of a sunset in Costa Rica but obviously it's way too dark, it has too much contrast so we are going to edit this. In the LR time-lapse user interface you have different areas. This is the preview where you can playback your sequence. This is the folder selector where you can select and browse your uh, time-lapse sequences. This is the workflow buttons that I will explain you next and this is a table with all the images that you have in this sequence and later we will see the develop parameters as numbers here too. But don't worry, it's really easy. So we start setting keyframes. Keyframes are the images that we want to edit now. So when we click on this keyframes wizard, it will try to set a number of keyframes. In this case it's only two because it's a very short sequence. But no matter um, what the wizard proposes, you can just use this slider to set more or less keyframes. Just set the amount of keyframes that you think you will have to edit. In this case I will use three because one at the beginning, one in the middle because here the sun is quite bright and then one at the end. So basically keyframes are the frames that we are only editing. All other frames will get edited by LR time-lapse automatically. Okay, next step is save. We always go from left to right through this workflow. After saving you will see this red indicators vanish when you save. The next step is drag to Lightroom and you'll always get tooltips when you hover over those buttons. So just check out the tooltips if you're not sure what to do. In this case we are going to drag this folder, bring it to Lightroom. And this process is quite easy. Because Lightroom is not visible at the moment, I'm going to drag it down to my taskbar, hover a moment over the Lightroom icon and then wait until Lightroom comes up and now go back and drop this into the Lightroom library. Make sure that Lightroom is in library mode because otherwise it won't work. Now the Lightroom importer comes up and here just take care that it's set to add your images to your Lightroom catalog. Now click on import and Lightroom will add this to your catalog. You can find it under previous import but since this is a collection uh, you should just right click here and go to go to folder in library just to have the folder selected in your Lightroom library here. Okay, now you can see the first image has four stars. This is an indicator that it's a keyframe. Now you'll find a couple of filters here um, on the right 
side in Lightroom, those have been installed with alert time lapse and it's normally it will be set to full sequence. Now just set the filter to keyframes and this will show you only the three images that we have chosen as our keyframes. Well, now let's go and edit those frames. In this case, the images are quite dark and contrasty. Um, in order not to blow the highlights, I've chosen to expose less uh, to save the uh, bright area here around the sun. So now I will just bring back the shadows pull down the highlights a little bit, just decrease the contrast. I will make a very simple editing here, a quick editing and um, then just set my white balance to my liking like this and just make it a little bit brighter for the beginning of the sequence drag down the highlights a little bit again. Okay, after editing the first keyframe I'm going to bring the settings from the first to the next and I recommend using the script that you will find here on the top in the scripts menu. On Mac please take care it's just a small script role that you will see there and then just go to LR Timelapse Sync Keyframes. This will preserve some initializations that LR Timelapse did um, opposed to if you use the sync feature here in Lightroom, it might destroy those initializations. So next, keyframe now has the same settings like the first one. So let's just check what to do. The sun is quite bright, so I will pull down the highlights a little bit more here and I will try to um, emphasize a little bit on the colors and change the white balance a bit. I think this looks Nice, and now I bring those settings with the script again to the third image. So this is very dark, so I'm going to raise up the exposure a little bit and uh, just have a look at the film strip here at the bottom so that you can see the difference between those three images. And with the G key, you can go back to your library and check out your thumbnails here to see that this will give a nice transition. Okay, the next step is just to select all of those three images in grid view. Please always do this in the library in grid view because otherwise you won't save the metadata. This is the next step for all the images and then you get problems. So just take care to be in library grid mode and then go to save metadata to files or control S on Mac command S. Cool. Now we can go back to LR time lapse and now we continue in the second workflow row. Just hit on reload and you will notice something changes and those are your keyframes and the yellow peaks here, this is the exposure that you set. So you can check your table here and you will see that column exposure 2012 to 0.7. Let's go back to Lightroom and have a look. And if you have a look at the first image, then you will see exposure is 0.7. So this is the same settings and you can find all your edits now here in your table and this will instantly show you that you edited highlights, shadows, whites and blacks. Next step now is just to hit on auto transition to connect all the images that don't have those settings in a smooth transition. So auto transition and you can see it's a nice curve and if you click on all here on this small toggle button then you will see that the other settings here have been transitioned as well. Okay, last step, create some visual previews. Until now, we only see the camera preview here, but now we can develop our edits and make our time lapse show us visually how the final clip will look like. Additionally to 
showing this in LR time lapse. The most important thing is that we get this pink curve here that indicates us the amount of flicker that we have on the resulting edited clip. Even if your camera raw files don't show so much flicker in the first instance after editing with Lightroom you might introduce flicker the heavier you edit, the more flicker you might introduce into your sequence. So it's very important to do the deflickering after uh, rendering those visual previews and based on those visual previews. So what happens now is we can click on visual deflicker and a lot of times will give us a target line for our deflicker. So we can just use the smoothing slider here to bring the target line closer or less close to our luminosity line here. In this case, I'm not going to do multipass deflicker. This is an advanced feature where you can just let our tenders do several deflicker steps. In this case, I will just do a single deflicker and hit on apply. And now you can see what happens. The previews will be deleted, but not every single preview. Uh, some are already very close to the green line, they will be preserved and the other previews will get renewed with the deflicker settings applied. So this red curve just indicates that you have deflicker applied. As a result, you get a quite smooth pink curve. And if you're not happy with the smoothness of this curve already, you can click again on visual deflicker and just click on refine and this again will apply another deflicker step on your sequence and this time it does not erase so many images because most of them are already nice and will just apply deflicker to the remaining images. So with a couple of refine steps you can get very very close to that green target line and you'll get a very nice time lapse without any flickering. If you're happy with your sequence, we are now going to export it from Lightroom. So back in Lightroom, I go to the grid view again. Now you can see that metadata has changed from outside. That was a lot of time that's writing the uh, changed metadata for those images. So we're just going back to full sequence. Select the whole sequence with Ctrl or Command A, then go to metadata, read metadata from files just to bring the edits from LR timelapse into our Lightroom catalog. Now we can export the whole sequence with all those transitions applied. Okay, now go to export and you'll get the Lightroom export dialog. On the left, you'll find the LR timelapse presets. In this case, I will just use 4K. This will limit the exported intermediary files to 4K size. And then just choose um, export folder here. I recommend to use one main folder for uh, example, for a trip or for a bunch of time lapses and choose this main folder here and then a lot of time this will create subfolders with the name of your original time lapse. This makes it very easy to link those and find your exported versus your raw files. Now we click on export. Lightroom will start working. In this case it's not so many images but if you have a longer time lapse this might take some time. Once you finish, you get the render dialog popping up in LR time lapse, and it will show you your sequence. And um, you can go through the intermediary images here that have been generated in this folder here. And the intermediary files will always be marked with the LRT underscore. So basically this is an image sequence of JPEGs or for the pro version you can use TIFF as well that will now be used to render the final video. Let's go through the options quickly. Uh, the codec for the free and private license will be MP4. For pro you can have other 
more advanced codecs as well for your video file. Um, then you can just choose the output size. I'm going for 1080p in this case. You can choose the frame rate. You can choose the quality. Quality high mostly is very, very good. So just try with high and only if that's not enough, you can go for higher qualities. And the, those settings you can leave and their defaults. Um, here you have a check mark that you will get your Explorer or a Mac Finder pop up with the finished sequence when you're done. And here we have some post processing options. So for example, if you had a three to two aspect ratio footage like we in this case here, you can now set the exporter to force a 16 to nine export for your video and then you can shift the position of this 16 to 9 crop here. And then you can add some motion blur for in post processing and add some sharpen if you want. And at the last you will click on render video. This will be rendering your video in a background process and pop up the explorer or finder after the rendering has been finished. There you go, the Explorer popped up and this is our video. Quite nice, isn't it? That was quite easy to do, wasn't it? So just try your own time lapse. Check out my written instructions as well on allertimelapse.com and of course check out my other tutorials. Enjoy using Allertimelapse 5. Bye bye!